Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan. Welcome to the Apogee Rocketry Workshop. Today I'm going to talk to you about ejection baffles. Now the purpose of an ejection baffle is that it takes the place of wadding. Now you can use wadding, an ejection baffle, or you could use Nomex cloth. Um, they all do the same thing. It protects the parachute from the heat of the ejection charge. Um, an ejection baffle is more of a mechanical way um, and then the advantage is um, you can attach a uh, the shock cord right to it, like in this one right here. Um, I thought I'd show you a little bit on how to assemble one. Uh, this is the one from Apogee Components. It comes with uh, four discs and a spar. Uh, actually, you're only going to use three of the discs. So the first thing you'll do is you'll just pop them out of the um, laser cut um, plywood. There we go. Come on. One little tap doesn't want to let go. All right, um, you'll see two of the uh, half discs have a hole in it. You only need one of them, um, and that hole is for the um, the metal screw eye. And this will just get glued right into the hole. And I'm going to take my glue, and I want to put it on the. Uh, the threads, and I'm using wood glue. You can also use um, super glue. Super glue works just as well too. So you can see I have it on there. I'm just going to screw it in. And this this is meant to be a little bit tight, and I don't want to go past the threads as I'm screwing it in, because then um, then it strips out the hole. So I just want to stay on the threads, go deep enough. And then I want to put some more glue on the back side. And then smear it around so we get good coverage. I have some paper towels handy because this gets a little bit messy. Um, now I want to take the spar, and you can see that it has three little notches on it. Um, so I'm going to put uh, wood glue in the notches on the this is going to be one side and take this one that you have your screw eye in and put it into one side don't put it in the middle because if you put it in the middle then um, now your screw eye is in the wrong spot and your screw eye I was saying you could do it horizontal but it really doesn't matter just as long as it will go in the tube so it's not hanging off the edge so I've done one and I'm going to put the other one in. And while it's drying, I want to lay it kind of um, like that. So it makes like a little rocker. And basically now the weight of the little spar is pressing down. And just hold it until the glue grabs. And then I got the, the one in the middle, so I'll go ahead and put glue on that one. And then I'll put the, uh, the third little disc right there in the middle. All right. So now you want to let this dry completely, because if you start sliding it around, uh, it's going to knock off the little discs. So. I'm just going to use the magic of video here. And I've got one that's already dry. See, I moved that one and it fell apart. That's okay. This one's dry. Okay, so now this one's dry. It's nice and tight. Um, before you go ahead and, and glue it up, um, you can attach the shock cord to it. Uh, but this one, I'm going to put it into the coupler first. Now the reason we put it into a coupler is so that it's easier to slide into the body tube. Uh, and the coupler can also serve a secondary purpose, and that's to join two body tubes together. So if you want a long rocket, you can put the, uh, the ejection baffle right there in the middle. So you can glue it together. But before you do that, you have to attach the shock cord to this. And let's see if I have a long piece here. So I'll just tie my shock cord onto the metal screw eye. We'll use a double knot. And then I'm going 
going to put a little bit of glue on that knot because I don't want that knot to come undone. Okay, just get it really good into that knot. All right. And then at this point, now I can start gluing it into the tubes. And so, so this is one tube. I'll just smear a little glue in there, smear it around. And this is going to be my bottom. And I put it in halfway. Um, and then this will be the, the top tube because you want the shock core going out the top. And smear glue on both the inside and the outside. Make sure that shot cord's all the way through. Make sure that the other part doesn't get wedged in there. And then just slide it together in one quick motion. Sometimes if you don't have enough glue on it, it can uh, seize up on you. And then just wipe off the excess glue on the outside. So that one's already uh, ready to go. Now on, on smaller rockets, um, now this is this is our um, 18 millimeter version, um, and this is also going to get glued into a tube coupler like we did. Uh, but to attach the shock cord to this one, it's too small to put a screw eye on it. So what you can do is before you glue it into the uh, tube, into the coupler, is you can tie the shock cord right to the spar. Now make sure that you cinch down on that knot pretty good because what we don't want is we don't want this this sliding around on us because um, this is wood and wood is definitely not as strong as that uh, metal screw eye. Um, so we don't want it sliding around because uh, Kevlar is very abrasive and it can actually work like a saw and saw that spar in half. So we don't want it sliding around, so make sure that you really glue it down good. And the part that sticks up, you know, you can glue that along the spar as well. You know, and then hold it there until it dries. Like that. And then once it dries, then you can go ahead and glue it into the coupler like we just did before. Uh, actually, yeah, we did glue one into the coupler. No, I didn't. I didn't glue one into the coupler. <laughs> uh, okay, so once it's dry, um, you can just take some gl glue, put it inside your coupler, both sides, smear it around, and if your finger is too big to go inside, um, use a wood dowel to get it in there. Make sure you get a bunch of glue in there. And then we're going to slide it into the coupler. And then I want to come back. Now the spar is sized to the length of the, uh, the coupler. And we do that for a reason, so that you have some excess um, coupler showing, so that you can put a fillet on there. So I'm going to put a fillet down in there, smear it around. I want to do it on both sides. Now if any's on the outside of the coupler, go ahead and wipe that off. And what you can do is to uh, drop some glue down in there on those, the middle disc, and then take a wood dowel and then spread it around, create a fillet on that inside, and go ahead and do that for both sides. Just like that. And then put this aside to dry. Um, and when it's dry, again, go ahead and take your shock cord and attach it to that 
screw eye. And put glue on that knot, as always. That's a critical knot. If that knot should come apart, um, the, uh, the shock cord is going to come loose and you're going to have a good hard time putting it down in there again. Um, we'll probably talk about that in a future video. Now, um, if the rocket is shorter and you're not going to use it to um, splice two tubes together, um, this is going to be my fins, and I haven't put my engine mount in. And I would suggest putting the um, the baffle in before you put your engine mount in. Um, but you need to know how deep inside it's going to go. So if I take my engine mount, and if I if my engine mount is going to go there, and I can mark it, and always use a pencil when you're doing this. This will be the front end of the engine mount, and the um, engine ejection baffle should go at least one body tube diameter in front of there. So I want the back end right here. And then I'm going to take a wood dowel and I'm going to mark it at that same length. So there's where it's going to the back end. So I'm just going to mark it right here. I'm going to use that to smear glue inside the tube. So I'll just take it and smear some glue on there. And then carefully put it through the tube without touching the sides and then smear it around. And I don't want any glue down in this area because that's where the engine mount is going to go. And it's going to get really hard to put that engine mount in there if there's a lot of glue in there. So here's my uh, front end of the ejection baffle and I want to push that down through getting it past the glue which is the tricky part. And I'm going to take the wood dowel and push it in until the line is in the right spot and then I know my ejection baffle is in deep enough and again we'll let that dry um, you can also at this time start putting in your engine mount and attaching the fins and that's basically how you make and use an ejection baffle uh, again my name is Tim Van Milligan I'm from Apogee Components come to our website at www.apogeerockets.com Subscribe to our newsletter um, so that you get notifications when these videos come out and when our printed edition of our newsletter comes out. They're every other week. So if you're only watching the videos here on YouTube, you're missing half of the fun and half of the information. So thanks for coming. Um, may the winds be light, may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets fly straight and true.